in this lesson we will discuss about optimal load flow and we will also conduct an optimal load flow in etap and i hope by the end of this lesson you will understand the difference between an optimal load flow analysis and a simple load flow analysis so let's get started and over here we have the optimal load flow we will discuss the difference between the optimal load flow and the load flow over here so this is used by utilities for guidance and decision making so in order to explain optimal load flow i will use two different examples over here so the example number one so in the in this example we have three generators connected to a single load each generator is capable of managing the load individually and these three generators have identical capacities identical fuel cost and identical turbine systems etc and these are connected at different distances from the load over here so the generator g1 is connected about 1 km away from the load and the generator g2 is connected 3 km away from the load and the generator g3 is connected 0.5 km from the load so according to the load flow analysis you can actually determine or you can actually have different number of solutions so say this is a 100 megawatt of load and we can generate make the generator g1 generate about 50 megawatts generator g2 generate about 25 megawatts and the generator g3 generate about the other 25 megawatts so in all we could provide 100 megawatts of load to this load over here so what if we also take into the consideration of economy so saying that all these three generators have identical fuel cost and identical capacities say we will only take into consideration of the transmission cost so here we have three different transmission cost the transmission cost increases as the distance between the source and the load increases so when we take into the economic factors as well then most of us will select this generator over here that is g3 because here when the fuel cost are all same and the cost involved in the transmission is much less for g3 compared to g2 and g1 so utilities will opt to start this generator in order to provide this load over here because this is the most economic selection between these three generators over here so here we have the difference between the optimal load flow and the ordinary load flow so in the ordinary load flow we just assign and we can have different combinations of generations but whereas in case of economic considerations and other considerations such as voltage constraint security constraint reactive power constraint real power constraint etc we will opt for the optimal load flow and the optimal load flow will give the most optimal solution in this case so let us look at another example over here so in this example we have a generation company which has three generators and having the following cost functions so the cost function for the unit a is 15 plus 1.5 pa pa pb and pc are the value of power that is generated using this machine over here so 1.4 pa plus 0 0.04 pa square which is given in dollars per hour and similarly for unit b we have 25.1.6 pb plus 0 0.05 pb square and similarly for unit c we have this equation over here so the question is how should these units be dispatched for a load of 350 megawatt at minimum cost when taking into consideration of ordinary load flow we only need to meet this 350 megawatt without any consideration we do not have any constraints we can actually put in different ways as we want to but here we have this constraint over here so we will have to select these three units and appropriately size the generation values so that we have the minimum cost in this case so i have solved this problem over here so lambda a is the first derivative of the above cost equation over here and we will have to equate for lambda a lambda b and lambda c and after equating you will get the power to be generated from the generator a is 95.3 megawatts 
and PB is 74.2 megawatts and PC is 180.5 megawatts. So in total we have 350 megawatts and here we also have the cost of generation and you can see that the cost involved in generating 350 megawatts is up 1927.2 dollars per hour. So this is the minimum cost that you could achieve in this case. We can also implement optimal load flow in a tab with various constraints. Let us see some other types of optimal power flow. In this case we have different constraints. So in the economic load dispatch here we will only consider the economic factors such as the fuel cost, the energy price from the grid etc. And in the optimal reactive power dispatch we will try to minimize the reactive power. So here the reactive power is the constraint and the economic emission dispatch here we will consider the emission as a constraint. We will have to reduce the emission. Over here we have the security constraint. So we will have to take into consideration of various contingencies as well. So in ETAB we can also perform this optimal load flow and let us go ahead and do it. So here we are in ETAB and I have already created a similar layout as explained in the example. We have three generators over here and each generator is of 200 megawatts each and we have these following loads over here. So let me conduct a load flow in this case and you can see that this, this is the swing generator over here and these generators are generating about 9 megawatts of power over here and this is 4 megawatts of power. And you can see the total load over here that is 5 megawatt plus 1.8 megawatt plus 4.5 megawatt plus 6.6 .6 megawatts. So here I have assigned the values of generation and I have not used any constraints in this case. So in order to perform optimal load flow you will have to go to this portion over here and you can see the optimal power flow analysis. Now select the optimal power flow analysis and go to the edit study case over here. And in the edit study case you will get the study case editor you can provide in the study case id. This is the solution parameters and here you can select different loading categories, generation categories, charger loading, initial conditions, load diversity etc. And over here. So this is the objective or the constraint that we are selecting. So the objective constraint. So I have used the minimum real power losses. So the weightage is 100 percentage and I will also check this over here. So the minimum reactive power losses and over here I have the minimum fuel cost as well. So I have selected these three constraints over here and the weightage provided for these three constraints is 100 over here and the bus voltage constraint I am not providing any constraint for the bus voltage over here for now and we can also provide in the branch flow constraint so we can decide how much of power we need to limit for these three cables over here and similarly generator AVR and over here this is the generator MW. So here you can see that we are minimizing the cost that is involved with these two generators generator 2 generator 3. So let me add in this also over here and let me deselect all of these. Here the maximum megawatt is 10 megawatt that is limiting our optimization. So let me go ahead and change that and let me go to this generator over here and in the fuel cost you can see we have the model type. I have selected the equation over here and provided the equation that I have used in the example over here. So providing the values for C0, C1, C2. And we can also provide in the fuel cost in dollar per mega bitumen. You have to provide in the generator limits. So the generator limits I will provide in the operating values or if it is user defined I will provide in 150 megawatts. 
so the minimum is 0 megawatt and the maximum is 150 megawatts and let me go ahead and show you, you this fuel cost for this generator and let me change this to 150 megawatts so even though the capacity of the generator is 200 megawatts i will be limiting the generator to 150 megawatts of power and the optimal load flow will be conducted based on that so let me again go back to the edit study case and to the generator megawatt i'm going to select generator 2 generator 3 and generator 4 and all the weightages are 100 percentage or 100 if i want to change the weightage i can change this weightage over here et and let me provide in this value over here and let me go back to the objective and verify this okay we have minimized the real power losses minimized reactive power losses and the fuel cost as well so let me click this on okay and i will run the optimal load flow over here and you can see that the power that is delivered from these three generators over here so our generator number four is delivering most of the power 7.2 megawatts and over here we have 3.7 megawatts and over here we have 4.4 megawatts of power and here we have optimized our generation based on economic constraints but when we look at the voltage at this particular bus you can see that the voltage is 50 percentage so we will have to go ahead and provide in some constraints for the voltage as well so let me go to the objective over here i am going to select the flat voltage profile and i am going to provide in a enforced constraint for the voltage as well so this is the voltage constraint over here and after that i am going to run the optimal workflow again so in this case you can see that the voltage has improved and you can see that the mvar generations has also changed in this case and this is 7.8 megawatts of power 4.3 megawatt and 5.7 megawatts so this is the optimized power flow taking into the consideration of the voltage the fuel cost and we can also provide in other constraints that are available over here so let me close that and when we compare this with that of the ordinary load flow this is what you get our generator 4 is generating 5 megawatts generator 2 is generating 9 megawatts and over here we have our generator 3 generating 4 megawatts and over the optimal load flow we have the generators generating the power at the minimum fuel cost and we have also constraints on the voltage as well so now let us generate some of the reports over here you can select the optimal setting report over here and let me generate the optimal settings over here and you can see these are the optimal operating conditions so the generator 2 is operating at 4.263 and delta is the change from the rated value we have provided in or the value from the normal load flow analysis and we have the generator 3 over here and the generator 4 over here so these are the optimal values for operation and we can also provide in constraints for tab changes svcs datcoms etc so i hope you understand the difference between the optimal load flow analysis and the ordinary load flow analysis so that's all for this lesson and i will see you in the next lesson